Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, Nigerian Air remains suspended indefinitely, and that is being announced by the Aviation Minister. On the second day of the ministerial sectoral update on Monday, May 27 in Abuja, the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Kiyamo, has announced that Nigerian Air will remain suspended indefinitely. As of January 2024, Kiamo had indicated that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, had commenced investigation into the controversial Nigeria Air deal, which was unveiled during the tenure of ex-aviation minister Hadi Sirika. At just a matter of days to the end of the administration of ex-president Muhammad Buhari, KMO summarized the controversy, saying the project was never Air Nigeria, it was only painted Nigeria Air. It was Ethiopian Airlines trying to flag our flag. Um, you know, 60% of the profit is for another country, and how does that benefit us? So it remains suspended. And that was being said by the aviation minister, Festus Kiamo. Now joining us to have a conversation on this whole controversy and with the suspension is Wale Shadere. Um, he's an aviation analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, mm. fantastic. So we're talking about Nigeria Air. I remember when this controversy came out. Um, in fact, when everyone was happy that finally there's Nigeria Air, <laughs> because as a kid I knew Nigeria Air, and so when you're yeah, seeing yes, Nigeria Airways, we were flying that proudly, and all of a sudden it was gone. So when we heard that Nigeria Air was coming back, everybody, you know, was happy about it. We're excited that yes, we're moving forward, you know, in the aviation industry. But our hopes were dashed when we found out that it might not just be Nigeria Air. There was, you know, some form of scam, if I can use that word, um, you know, in, in this whole thing. And so it wasn't Nigeria Air. It was another aircraft that was being borrowed or being paid for and painted Nigeria Air. So how, how did we get here as a nation? And I want to get your opinion on this whole controversy before we even talk about the suspension right now. Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you for having me. Um, the Nigeria Air Project has been on for close to uh, eight years of the last administration. And it was a time everybody looked forward to having a national career because of uh, um, the problem associated with domestic airlines in Nigeria, um, who, which um, those airlines have not been able to fill the void that we look with so much enthusiasm but be that as it may that was not the first attempt at setting up a national career after um, the exit of Nigeria Airways so we already had one that was mooted by former Minister of Aviation um, Stella Odua uh, and um, Yuguda um, but this one looked promising because Immediately, the minister, the government came in in 2015. That was one of the signature projects of uh, the Buhari administration. And they went through it. Initially, the project was suspended because the uh, former vice president felt that they needed to do uh, certain things to make sure that they be quit to Nigeria, a very good national airline. But I think two years or three years after that, we move at a pace that, you know, surprised everybody that actually were um, serious as setting up a national career. Uh, but somehow, this airline, we moved on. Um, we contacted Ethiopian Airline. And remember, Ethiopian Airline is one of the most lucrative, uh, is the most lucrative airline in aviation in Africa. Yeah. So Ethiopian Airlines was con uh, contacted to set up, uh, to help us set up an airline as a technical um, partner. There's not mm -hmm. wrong in having a technical partner like it's done all over the world. You see Rwanda Air partnering with Qatar Airlines. You see Ethiopian even buying stake in other African airlines. So it's, it was actually made in politics because. Uh, some people felt, okay, if we have a national career, it will affect the growth of the domestic airline. So they move on to see that this project did not see the light of day. 
and uh, some other people felt that Ethiopian Airlines shouldn't have been given that type of shareholding. It was a fantastic thing because government was not going to put money so much into it. Government was just going to have like five or ten percent there to give it sovereign backing. But a lot of people felt that this airline should have been set up only by Nigeria. Yeah. And set up without having any partnership from anywhere, which I say is wrong. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shadari, yeah. before I lose track of what you just said, are you are you s blaming the failure on sabotage? Because if I got yes. you right, there are people who worked yes. against it. Absolutely, there are a lot. There were a lot of things associated with that project. One was sabotage. One was lack of transparency uh, from the former handlers of the project. Some people felt that the project was not transparent enough, that um, the minister or the ministry were not giving Nigeria the actual uh, things that um, um, happened. So those that conspired to kill that project were armed with all the things they needed to stop the, the project, coupled with the fact that uh, a lot of people felt it wasn't transparent, that some people just want to use Nigeria to corner the, what belongs to Nigeria to itself. But if we look at it, we have um, people who were said to have bust it. MRS, NACO also were planning to buy stake at that particular time. And the former minister has said he is ready to give account of all what happened with that airline. It's still very early to begin to know whether it was transparent or no. Thank God the matter is um, under scrutiny uh, and with time we are going to know exactly how fraudulent like the minister claimed but yeah. let me tell you on this program um, authoritatively that the minister is planning to float a national carrier and the problem you see when we have a new a change of government we tend to review everything we are over review at the end of the day, we throw the baby away with the bathwater. What I would have expected as an individual is for the new government to look at the mistakes we made and try to correct them. It's not late to correct them. Uh, let us not truncate a project that has already started. If you say you don't want Ethiopian airline because Ethiopian airline, airline is a domestic airline let us review the shareholding let us look at the way we can do so wait be because before we even get there yeah. um you know you, you talked about this whole thing being you know sabotage and lack of transparency but isn't it illegal somewhat to actually say something is for you when you know it's not because if you're if transparency is some word that we can just throw around and say okay we did not just tell you you know how much yeah. neck deep we are in um with Ethiopian airlines why did we not know that from the get-go why do they have to act like the with like we have a, a national carrier, carrier. A plane, meanwhile yeah. we do not they could have still called it Ethiopian airlines who's working for Nigeria or say what exactly mm -hmm. it is because if you're saying let's not throw away the baby and the bathwater here it's almost it's almost like mm -hmm. saying okay we might as well go on with that same um with that same notion that we might have a national carrier meanwhile we know that it's for Ethiopian mm. airlines so how, like why why do we have to do that in the first place okay um you see there's no one way or one model of setting up an airline we have different model it depends mm. the government might decide to own the airline 100 percent like ethiopian airlines did like kenya airways did before they privatized the airline after becoming successful the airline uh, the government can decide to go into ppp because airline business is among us and a lot of people felt the government has a lot of priorities um, 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 a lot of commitment to other sectors like education, like growth, like infrastructure. Why do you want to put those hard end resources into an airline? Why don't you privatize it? Bring in private sector to come and run it. And the bane of all, everything we have done in this country is because we put ourselves first instead of putting the country first. I'm not insinuating anything. I just felt um, I do not have all the details about the contract. 
the minister may be right, but the minister may be wrong. But one thing I've come to realize in this country is that when we want to do a new project, we try to discard the other one that has been done, give it a lot of name, call it all manner of name, so that we discredit and go along with our own. Instead of starting afresh, instead of committing a lot of taxpayers' money into it, let us look at where we have gone wrong, where we need to correct ourselves. And that is why I said we do not need to um, throw the baby away with the bathwater. Let's even assume that the minister is going to set up an airline again. A lot of people will still come up to criticize it because of vested interest. Um, Air, Nigeria Air was criticized because of vested interest. Let me tell you the vested interest in that airline. A particular airline was trying to come up at that particular time. And they felt with the strength of Ethiopian airline, it may most likely muzzle them, which Ethiopian airline has said is not true. I was at a conference in Addis Ababa, and they laid everything bare for us. And we've seen what is playing now. We need a national carrier, but it must be done transparently. It must be for Nigeria, and it should be for Nigeria. What I'm trying to say is that we have capacity. One airline in Nigeria cannot, you know, help us to reciprocate the bilateral air services agreement that we have with many countries. We need more capacity. Aviation is about critical mass. We need a lot of airlines to compete with these uh, big airlines that are very monstrous. Airpiece, like I said, cannot compete alone against these big airlines. So we need capacity. We need a lot of airlines. We need like three or four more airlines that can come up and give these foreign airlines a run for their money. Airpiece, if care is not taken, may most likely be muzzled up. So we need critical mass to be able to compete, to be able to read the dividend um, of the aviation industry. The foreign airlines are making a kill on this route. Airpiece came and we saw the narrative. It changed, even though Airpiece is not or cannot for now, for some reasons, compete with these airlines. But what Airpiece has done is highly commendable because immediately Airpiece came, the airlines tried to bring down the fare. Yes. You can imagine if we have like two, three airlines from Nigeria, I'm telling you the first to London will be like 400,000. So is floating a national carrier going to tackle this? Because you're saying you need yes. two to three more airlines, yes. but if we had the yes. Nigerian yes. air, yes. would that be able to take, uh, yes. take up this space? Yes. You know, it will take up the space, but we need more airline. So it's not going to be, before Airpiece came, there was no airline um, competing with this airline, but Airpiece came we saw the change. Now, we saw the let, let's just let's just then understand if we this. Have two more airlines, we can see that. So that's the national carrier and maybe another one yes, as well. Let's understand and this. Another one. But if we have a national carrier, because it's national mm -hmm. in cool, it's going to get a lot of support from the government. It's yes. going to get a lot of support from the people. So it's going to be profitable as long as when we know how to manage our resources. We know how to be frugal with our resources and not spend as if we have made all the money in it. Airline business is capital intensive. We can't begin to behave like Father Christmas. <laughs> it has to pro be properly managed. Yeah. And that is why I recommend, and a lot of experts in the aviation recommend that this airline must not be owned 100%. Nowhere in the world, again, that airline business is owned 100% by government. All government does is give it the enabling environment, give it the space to breathe, give it all the waivers, some of the waivers, and allow it to try. And let us have a good people who will manage this airline. So, uh, at times when I travel outside this country, I see Kenya Airways, I see Ethiopian Airlines. Airline is like your own embassy. It's carrying your flag. Anywhere yeah. you go, it's representing the country. And that is why I'm a very big fan of the national career because I know the benefit are enormous. I know the benefit are homogos. So if you're saying that, you know, we need more carriers um, and then yeah. you don't want the government to own it 100%, why are we not looking for homegrown, um, you know, airlines springing up instead of going to another country? Uh, uh, definitely. If, if you can't force people to come and own an airline, what I would have expected from most of these domestic airlines is for them to come together is for them to say okay we want to do this thing together nigerians airlines are very small they are fragmented and very very weak 
So, if you put the L aircraft together, they are less than 50. We need a critical mass of 120, 150 aircraft mm. that we actually spread, um, uh, connect the whole of Africa. Nigeria is a signatory to the single uh, um, African air transport market. But are we really benefiting from that? You see our, you see all these small African countries taking advantage of these um, agreements we have um, in Africa for air connectivity, taking advantage of it. You come to Nigeria, people doing interconnectivity within Africa, they, they tax, no, the taxes, we okay. have over 37 different taxes, multiple to taxes. To the airlines. That, to wow. the airlines. Okay. So there's no way an airline business is going to thrive in Nigeria when you have these multiple taxes. Mm. I, was, uh, I was at uh, Ayata event last year in Africa, where the Ayata vice president was really lamenting that the charges from Lagos and Abuja airports are the highest in the world. And that is true. And it will, immediately some of us agreed with him that it is true. There's no way. We have seen airline and um, aviation as um, a, a sector where the government needs to make money. All over the world, the government does not make money from aviation. What they do, whatever money is they, 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 they make from the sector, they plow them back to the industry. And that is why you see that most of the airports you go around the world, um, construction uh, uh, projects are going on almost on a daily basis because you need to expand your airport. You need to expand facilities. But what we do here in Nigeria, we take it to the national treasury. It shouldn't be so. Again, you find out that um, the um, uh, um, uh, um, interest on loan is very, very expensive. There's no way an airline is going to be prosperous in this part of the world if you're still asking them for uh, um, to, um, two digit loans at 25% interest rate. Whereas in other clients, airlines get loans with just 1% interest rate. So, how, why, how will an airline not survive? How will airlines not survive under that client? So, we need to give, you know, provide the enabling environment for these airlines to thrive. You can't continue to, uh, you know, put a lot of body on the airlines. Then the exchange rate is another factor in the sense that today the Naira is uh, uh, 1,400 to the dollar. Tomorrow is 1,500. Next mm. tomorrow is 1,300. So there's no stability in the currency. Because if I need to buy spare, I'm not going to buy spare in Naira. Aviation is highly dollarized. The do dollar is the language of airline business of aviation. So we need to, government needs to provide that. I, you do not give incentives to these airlines or this national carrier that we are trying to flow. There's no way you can be prosperous. There's no way that airline can be prosperous. So government needs to go back to its drawing board and see how they can make the environment conducive in terms of infrastructure, in terms of rooms, in terms of uh, other incentives to these carriers because these airlines need to survive. Airline business is highly capital intensive. And that is why somebody like Richard Branson of Virgin Atlantic will yeah. tell you that when he came into aviation, he was a multi-billionaire. Before he came into the aviation industry, he was a multi-billionaire. But now, he can't even boast of being a multi-billionaire. And if care is not taken, he may not even be, he cannot boast of even being a, a, a multi-millionaire, not to talk of. So, aviation is very interesting. It's very intoxicating for those who go into it. But I tell you, um, the profit margin is very, very small. So most of the people who go into airline business in Nigeria are into it for different reasons, and which I may not be able to tell you. Some of them are not into real airline business because if you are into your real airline business, you won't be carrying on the way you are carrying on and behaving as if you have arrived. Aviation is capital intensive, and Nigerians need to know that. The operators need to know that. So, like I said, the national carrier is very, very important, honestly, because one is even going to create a lot of employment. If you create one airline, you are sure of having over 200 people that you, uh, uh, you, you employ. You have, you employ engineers, you employ pilots, you 
deployed quitting service is an enabler of the economy. That is why we are not happy the way some of the airlines run their uh, businesses. Some of them are even owned by state government. So when states own an airline 100%, they may not be accountability. They just see it as a drain pipe or conduit pipe for them to do whatever they want to do, to steal government money. Mm. So with all and of that this is... why some of us believe that it should be private sector driven. What government should do is just to own like a uh, minority stake, like 5% uh, 5 or 10% uh, 10 share to give it that sovereign backing. Okay, so with with these points that you you've made now, do you think that suspending it indefinitely is is a good call? Um, whereby you uh, also yeah. said that the the minister is trying to float another one. I, I know you've kind of like lit, mentioned it a little that we cannot throw the baby and the bathwater. But how would you think we can revisit you know the old one if yeah. we have to and try to make it better than you know starting up a new one? Absolutely. Well, that's what I've just said. That then I have not. Uh, the, I went to the dictionary to look up to look at what it means to suspend something indefinitely, and I was shocked. Sure you can't suspend a project indefinitely. You either suspend it for a while to review, or you cancel it outright. Yeah. So when you say you suspended something indefinitely, and I was beginning to wonder what type of English is that, but be that as it may. <laughs> he has looked at it and is not likely to even review, mm. um, look at it again. What we have just done is we just want to throw the ba baby away with the bathwater. And the problem we have in Nigeria, let it be seen that I'm the one that did this. Let it not be seen that I inherited this. And look, what is wrong in inheriting? You, as a government, you can't even finish all the project. Somebody must inherit something. Yes, mm. the good part throw the good part away, uh, the bad part away, and take the good part. Look at it, remodel it, fine-tune it, bring it out in a better way, and people will look at it. Uh, for him to have even used that language that is fraudulent, and you know in Nigeria, when is, once you say something is fraudulent, people will just say, since it's fraudulent, mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing we can do. Let's just discard this thing and see if we can start a new thing. We love to start new things. New things excite us in Nigeria so much. But be that as it may, let's see how far the minister can go. If he's still interested in a national career, we will look at it, we will scrutinize it from the beginning to the end to ensure that uh, the mistake, mistakes of the past are not repeated again. Yeah. I think that's that's a good way to learn and i and i know one thing you said um that was quite profound is you cannot finish all of the government projects um we need to understand yeah. that there must be continuity in government so Absolutely. if someone starts something a new administration comes up takes takes it up and you just keep running with it yeah. because that's the only way we can Absolutely. grow and flourish as a nation and yeah. develop um to the point that we want yeah. to get to so um with this one being indefinitely suspended I don't know what that means. We don't know what that means. <laughs> but then we, we, yeah, we hope that they do the, the needful, whether it's starting up a new one totally or, you know, just amending certain things that needs to be taken yeah. out um, and imputing yeah. the others that needs to be to be there just to make sure that we have a national career because it would really help us. All right. We want to say thank Absolutely. you for coming. It was lovely having a conversation with you. Thank you, Wally. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with Wally Shadari. Um, he's an aviation analyst. And we've just been talking about the fact that the minister has announced that Nigeria Air is suspended indefinitely. All right, this is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. It's been lovely having a breakfast with you as always. My name is Rume Paulson. We're suspending the show till tomorrow, <laughs> not indefinitely. So join us tomorrow for another edition of the show. My name is Nyambul Agaji. Bye for now. Bye for now.